My name is James Oliver, and I'm an automation engineer at Rancher Labs. Today I'll be demonstrating Rancher VM, a free and open source virtual machine solution built on KVM hypervisor and Kubernetes container orchestration system. Rancher VM requires a Kubernetes 1.8 or newer cluster with KVM installed on the nodes. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be running the system locally within a virtual machine running Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, codenamed Xenial. I'm running this virtual machine with VMware Fusion version 8.5.3 and have enabled support for Intel virtualization extensions. To avoid confusion, I'll refer to this as the host VM. I have pre-installed KVM and deployed a single node Kubernetes cluster with Minikube. We begin by deploying Rancher VM to our Kubernetes cluster. In this case, I have already deployed all the components, but we have defined a system namespace, our back resources, custom resource definitions, created a VM controller, which is in charge of starting and stopping virtual machines and accompanying infrastructure. We've also created the user interface front end accessible via a Kubernetes node port service and a REST server backend. Finally, we've created an IP discovery controller, which runs on every node and determines the IP address assigned by the external DHCP server to each virtual network device. Rancher VM uses custom resource definitions to define the desired state of the system. As such, there are two ways to do things, by interacting with the user interface or by directly ma manipulating the custom resources. I'll add my public key to the system using kubectl now. It is recommended to use the GUI or by making API calls to the REST backend for all actions on the system. Let's discover where the UI is running. The UI may be accessed via the node port service for Rancher front end using any node IP in the external port. Now let's take a look at the user interface. The dashboard provides high-level counts of the resources in the system. If we navigate to the credential screen, we see the public key that was just added. The host screen is simply a list of Kubernetes nodes registered to the cluster, their IP addresses, available compute resources, per node VM limits, host named, and a set of conditions that assist with administering the cluster. We use Minikube to deploy Kubernetes, so there's only one node available. The Instances tab allows us to easily manage virtual machines in the system. By clicking Create and filling out the form, we can start several machines in one shot. Here I'll create three virtual machines, one vCPU each, 512 megabytes. We'll choose the Ubuntu 16.04 server image, however we have several to choose from. I'll add my public key, which will be authorized at boot using CloudInit. I'll leave the start instance immediately checkbox checked to start the machines immediately, and we'll click OK. The user interface is currently pull-based, which is similar to the Kubernetes dashboard, so state changes will not immediately be reflected. Clicking the tab will refresh the model. This is something that we will address in the future. As we can see, the machines eventually enter a running state. This means a pod was successfully scheduled to a node with sufficient compute resources, the virtual machine base image was successfully pulled from the Docker registry, the pod started and executed the QEMU process, and a VNC Unix socket was created in the pod. At this point, if we had enabled no VNC, we would be able to connect to the console and observe the boot sequence by pressing this button. The machine may not be ready to accept secure shell connections yet. If we wait a little longer, the DHCP client inside each VM will get an IP address from our external DHCP server. In this case, we ask for NAT networking on the host VM, so VMware is running the DHCP server. Now we may attempt to connect via SSH using our private key. We'll perform a quick connectivity test. And things are good. At this point, we have a fully functional virtual machine bridged with the network of our choice. 
For now, the guest VM's root disk is persisted to the host VM's local file system in QCAL format. It is located at Barlib Rancher. Starting and stopping virtual machines is pretty straightforward. Just click the Start Stop Radio button alongside a VM to toggle its state, or select several and use the buttons at the top. Let's stop all of our VMs. Once we are done with our virtual machines, we may delete them. Virtual machines will enter a terminating state until all of the associated resources behind the scene are cleaned up. This means terminating pods, potentially destroying the NoBNC web server, etc. In the coming weeks, we will add support for live migration. Whether an existing virtual machine's resource requirements surpass what is available on the physical host, or the operator has scheduled maintenance and needs to interrupt execution on a host, Moving a running virtual machine to another host transparent to the end user is of critical importance. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to open an issue at our GitHub project page, github.com forward slash rancher forward slash VM. Thank you.